And of course, as I get on the road, this happens. Weird. Let's take a look. I hope it doesn't get destroyed. What's up everyone? Ian here from Ian Lauer Astro. Today we're talking about the struggles with astrophotography. If you're new here, I make content about astronomy, astrophotography, and all the adventures that come with it. So if you want the stars in your life, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button if you can, that would be awesome. All right, let's get right to it. So the struggles with astrophotography. Astrophotography, in my opinion, is one of the most challenging and the most rewarding types of photography out there. There are so many things that need to go in your favor in order to be successful and have great images. A lot of you watching this video might not be astrophotographers and that's okay. You might just be interested and enjoy these deep sky photos that we take or the night sky shots of the Milky Way that you see. What you might not be aware of is the things that have to go into those types of photography and in particular, the struggles that a lot of us astrophotographers have to deal with and have to push through push through to achieve these types of photos to deliver them to you so we can bring the stars back in your life. First things first, we have to stay up late. So sleep deprivation, sleep deprivation. I, I sound sleep, I sound sleep deprived right now. I can't even talk. <laughs> sleep deprivation. We're up late at night taking photos of the Milky Way and deep sky objects, sometimes three, four in the morning until sunrise. It's about three, 3.30 in the morning. Milky Way's up in the sky, so we're gonna go shoot it. Other things include the travel that goes into it, having to go out to these dark sky locations because we need the right conditions, and then the weather has to cooperate, and don't even get me started on gear. Anyone who deals with any type of gear, no matter what industry you're in, you know the struggle with technology. That's what I need. Let's do that. Let's do exactly that. I mean, you can have a lens break on your, your camera could mount function. You might forget a piece of gear. You might forget an SD card. I was just on a video set where we recorded an entire video and guess what? After we completed it, the guy who was interviewing me forgot to turn on his microphone. So we had to do the whole thing over again. So there are struggles with just gear alone. Let me give you an example of the types of struggles that astrophotographers have to go through when trying to get these images of the night sky. Back in May of 2021, Fujifilm loaned me this 16 millimeter F 1.4 camera lens for my Fujifilm camera. So I was really excited to use this lens. However, they only let me borrow it for a few days at that time. And because of my schedule, I only had really one night to get the Milky Way. So what did I do? I decided to take the camera, go out to Joshua Tree, which is one of the closest dark sky places to me, and test it out, see how it does with Milky Way photography. So I'm going out to Joshua Tree, perfect. But where am I gonna stay? Well, I didn't wanna get a hotel because they can be expensive. And the park was fully booked. All the campsites were booked up. Now they do have walk-up sites, but I didn't wanna risk getting out there, trying to find a walk-up campsite, spending all that time while I could be spending that time looking for a composition with this lens. So what I did was I looked online and I found that there was public land right near the north entrance of Joshua Tree. I figured that's where I'm gonna stay, solve that problem, we're good to go. Now I'm on my way to Joshua Tree National Park to take some photos. So I'm on my way to Joshua Tree National Park. I got my 16 millimeter lens that I'm borrowing from Fuji. So I'm super stoked. I get out there, I'm driving around. I find a really cool composition down this dirt road. And I was driving down for like 15 minutes and I left that spot to go look, maybe there was some other composition that might be great. And of course, as I get on the road to start looking for other compositions, this happens. Weird. Let's take a look. Going out to shoot the Milky Way in Joshua Tree and uh, got a flat tire. So, took uh, that bad boy off right there. And 
stuck on that beautiful spare. Yep, I got a freaking flat tire. This posed a problem for me. I was running out of time and the composition that I wanted to use, that great spot that I found down that dirt road, well, a dirt road with a donut tire, I don't know how good of an idea that would be to drive down it. Do I risk going down that path, getting another flat tire? What if I got another flat tire? I'd be stuck out there, no cell service, and I haven't seen anyone around. Or do I just try and find another composition by driving along the roads and see if I could find something? I made the decision, I don't know if it was smart or not, to go down that dirt road, even with the spare tire, and I just kept my fingers crossed, hoping nothing bad happened, that I didn't get another flat tire. Well, eventually, I made it to the spot without getting another flat tire. Awesome. It's very nice. I was able to get my gear set up, I found that composition again, and now it was just time to wait for the Milky Way to come up. But wait, there's more. Now there was one more thing that I did, and it could have easily have been prevented, but I was kind of rushing out the door to get out to Joshua Tree. I forgot a jacket. I forgot a sweater. And normally I keep a sweater in my car at all times. However, I cleaned my car out a couple days before and so I didn't have it in there. And of course, the moment the sun dropped behind the mountains, the temperature also dropped. And boy, it was cold that night. Will you cut that out? And I just had a t-shirt and I had a windbreaker, which did absolutely nothing for me. So I was shivering all night trying to get these photos. But at the end of the day, I was able to get the shot that I wanted. Even though there were all these roadblocks, it helped me prepare for future scenarios. It started to make me think about things that maybe I didn't think about before. Think about backup plans. Think about, well, what do I do in these scenarios? What do I do if I get a flat tire in an area where there's no cell service and no one around? I did a lot of research on what I need to do in case that happens again. What I'm trying to say is even with all the struggles, even with all the roadblocks, don't forget to have fun while you're out there. Now that's just one example of the struggles that astrophotographers have to go through to get these kinds of photos. I know this situation's not unique to me, but if you have never done astrophotography before, I really hope that it just gives you a little bit more of an appreciation for what we have to go through. We do enjoy showing you the stars and bringing the stars into your lives. We hope that you find these photos beautiful, just like we do, and for us, the struggle is worth it. And for those of you who are astrophotographers, let me know some of the struggles that you go through. Let me know what are the things that you've gone through, some of your experiences, and maybe some of the failures or tragedies, a lost camera that dropped off your tripod and it broke, or maybe you, know, you forgot to screw something in and your telescope comes crashing down. These things have happened and I've seen it happen. So if you're an astrophotographer, let me know what are some of the struggles that you have gone through. Thanks so much for watching. Again, subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this, and I hope you have a wonderful day. chirping outside. He's like going, Meow.